This video is sponsored by Artlist. Hey everyone, Flo from Off to Lens here. I'm a French Australian filmmaker based in the French Alps, and today we're talking about my favorite lenses that I use with my BMPCC 6K and 6K Pro. I've already made a similar video early in 2021, but over the past year or so I've been using new lenses on different projects, so I thought I would update this list and make a quick video since I still get asked all the time about the lenses that I use. So in this video, I will talk about the lenses that I use the most for my documentary and travel work, as well as some that should be strongly considered for any 6K, 6K G2 and 6K Pro user. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. Canon 16-35 f4 IS I have said it before, this is the lens that I use the most. It is not the most exciting lens out there, but it is a very useful one. It is small, light, has IS, which is great for me since I do a lot of documentary and travel content, and it also happens to be weather sealed, which can be very important depending on the location that I find myself in. It is my go-to lens, and you can pretty much shoot everything on it, since 16-35 to gives you a pretty good range. This is a great handheld lens. The internal zooming is also a plus for gimbal work, for example. I would say more than half of my content is now shot with this lens on a 6K Pro. As always, all the gear mentioned in this video will be listed below. Makey S35 25mm T 2.1 I think any 6K or 6K Pro user should consider cinema lenses as they recently became very affordable and the image you get with them on these cameras can be beautiful. In 2021, I included the Makey S35 35mm on my list, and for good reason. I now own the 18, 25, 35, and 50, but the 25mm is definitely my favorite, and it comes down mostly to focal length. A 25mm and a Super 35 sensor allows you to pretty much shoot anything, from landscape to people. The image is beautiful, and the lens is also great to use. If you can afford it, and are in a market for a nice cinema lens, or if you are thinking of getting your first cinema lens, then you should definitely consider this one. Feel free to watch my full review linked below. Greyjoy 50mm 1.8 anamorphic lens. When I made the previous lens video, I hadn't heard of Greyjoy lenses, let alone tried one, or any anamorphic lens for that matter. I had been wanting to shoot anamorphic for a very long time, but it was either too expensive, or I didn't have the correct camera or mount. So when Greyjoy approached me asking me if I wanted to test out the new 1.8 lens, I was very excited. For me, wanting to shoot anamorphic was more about the look and feel, rather than feeling more in the frame or having crazy flares. I really like the image that comes out of this 50mm. I pretty much loved every single clip I ever shot. There is such a distinct feel to anamorphic footage, and I think it is hard to stay neutral when it comes to liking or not liking the image. I tried to use the lens in a lot of situations since then, and I was pleased with it every single time. I now have the 35mm as well, and whilst I prefer the wider focal length, the 50mm gives you a bit more of that anamorphic look, so I prefer to include this one. However, I think it is important to remember that anamorphic lenses are meant for a specific look, so I wouldn't recommend it for people that want an all-purpose lens, or as a first lens even. But if what you need or want is an anamorphic lens with a reasonable price, then again, this is a pretty solid option. Feel free to watch my full review of both lenses linked below. And now a quick word about today's sponsor, Artlist. As you know, I've been using Artlist for nearly 4 years now, for pretty much all my work. Whether it is for YouTube, commercial or documentary projects, and they recently had a major update, Artlist Max. With Max you still have access to thousands of songs and SFX with unlimited downloads, but you now also have access to footage, video templates, plugins and even an editing software. You can choose Max Pro, which is basically everything you need to create amazing content, all in one plan, covering every project worldwide from personal to commercial for $39.99 per month. And Max Social, which has all the features of Max Pro, tailored specifically for social media creators for $29.99 per month. For more info, be sure to check out artlist.io and don't forget to use the link in the description to get an extra 2 months when you subscribe to Artlist for the yearly plan. Canon 70-200 f4 IS Depending on the work you do, you will most likely need a telephoto at some point, especially if you work outdoors a lot like I do. This 70-200 f4 IS has been in my kit for nearly 6 years. I have used a 2.8 IS version many times, and whilst I love it, I found it too heavy and not worth the upgrade for my kind of work. For documentaries and travel, I want to have small and light lenses, so I don't have to carry a lot. The stabilization on this lens is incredible too. The fact that it is weather sealed is again very helpful. For example, I shot a lot of my Antarctica content handheld using the 70-200. And two of my favorite documentaries were shot with this lens as I was able to carry a very light rig and still manage to capture tight shots that would have required a tripod if the lens was heavier or without IS. And as always, internal zooming is great. Sigma 18-35 f1.8 
As before, this lens needs no introduction. Some people love it, some hate it. I still find it to be a must-have for any Super 35 sensor camera owner. On the 6K cameras, I use this lens for interviews, indoor shots and gimbal work. This lens might not have a lot of character and it doesn't feature IS, but for the price, I can't think of a better value. Even though it has a reputation of being a boring lens, I personally capture some of my favorite shots with it. A question that I get asked a lot is why do I have both the Sigma and the Canon 16-35 since they are quite similar in range. I use the Canon for documentary and travel work since it is light, has IS and is weather sealed. I can also use it on my EOS R for stills since it is a full frame lens. And like I said, I keep the Sigma for pretty much everything indoor, interviews, gimbal work and low light. There is quite a big difference between f1.8 and f4. So they do overlap in range, yes, but not in use. I always bring both on shoots and use them equally. As an example, earlier this month I was on a documentary shoot and I used a Canon handheld on a 6K Pro for outdoor shots and I used a Sigma on a regular 6K indoor since it was very dark on an easy rig to compensate for the lack of IS. Contact size 28mm 2.8 And this list wouldn't be complete without my actual favorite lens. If you have been following me for a while now, you know that I own a set of vintage contact Zeiss lenses and I love them. They all share the same beautiful look and character, but I love my 28mm the most. It happens to be the first one that I ever bought and the one that I used the most out of the kit. Again, I found that focal length to be very useful. The great thing about it is that originally it is a photo lens, so you can operate it without a photo focus if you want to and it is super light and small. Since it is a Contax Yashica mount, you do need to buy an adapter or get them cinemoded in order to use them on the 6K cameras. I chose the adapter option as it was quite cheap. I will link the adapters below. Again, if you're interested in these lenses, feel free to watch my full review of the set. That's it for me for today guys. Hopefully this was helpful to you if you're looking for your first or next lens. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you did. And let me know what are your favorite lenses and don't hesitate if you have any questions. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Also feel free to check out my new ebook, Freelance Documentary Filmmaking and Introduction where you can find a streamlined but comprehensive overview from pre-production all the way to marketing, built on years of my own experience shooting short documentaries around the world.